also talk about the, the Michigan State uh, entry back into postseason play after the downer of three and nine. So Mark Antonio lost some of his luster last season because we've all admired and been impressed with him taking top 30 to 40 recruiting classes, developing them and, and producing top 10 teams, and then three and nine last season. And your take on the bounce back this year to another nine win team. It's been a, a pretty improbable run. I, I think for sort of the reclamation has been as impressive as anything he's done. And what he's done there has been impressive. But they will, you know, I've heard from other coaches the hardest thing to do is to get it back once you've lost it. And so it, 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 either he has done that, which is incredible, or you know, there's also a train of thought that it wasn't as bad as, and I'm not talking about three and nine, three and nine is bad, but I'm talking about. The, the issues within the program and things that happened weren't as bad. They didn't really lose it. They just had a really, really bad season. Um, so you can argue either one way or another, but what they have is a lot of good young talent. The turnover was incredible. They really only started between three and four seniors this year, 10 sophomores, played 13 true freshmen. There was a lot of that, and, and their best players on both sides of the ball, both sides of the ball are mostly sophomores and, and freshmen and a couple of juniors. So he did it by... I don't want to say cleaning house, they didn't clean house, but that was part of the reason they, they struggled. They had a senior class last year that was um, lacking leaders that had been sort of underneath a great group. And then they had a freshman class that was really heralded, uh, but also lacked respect for the older players. And, and that created a, you know, a, a bad deal. Um, that's fixed itself quite a bit. I think you get humbled when you go three and nine. So that, that it, it's been an incredible run for them. You know, the question now is, you know, it was this, I mean, really, when you look at the age of this team, it ought to be the beginning of a two- or three-year run. And, and I think Michigan State fans are thrilled with 9-3, and three, thrilled to be back in postseason play for the most part, all that stuff. But they are also assuming that this isn't like the ceiling for this group, that next year when you have a, a star sophomore quarterback and a star sophomore middle linebacker is kind of the, the anchors of your team, that... that there's, there's more to come, and they have Michigan and Ohio State at home next year. I mean, there are opportunities. Talking Michigan State football with Graham Couch of the Lansing State Sports Journal. Also catch his work as he's co-host on The Drive, 92-1. The team, Graham, we're talking Michigan State football. Of course, the Holiday Bowl upcoming against Washington State. The other transformation for this team that I found interesting was when you think Mark Antonio, you think a punch the, the opponent in the mouth, uh, establish the ground game, be conservative, throw out the trick play once in a while. That's certainly a calling card as well. But the transformation of this team from a running team to a passing team and throwing the ball 55 and 60 times a game uh, near the, the, the end of the season uh, seemed um, just to be able to make that transformation uh, was kind of sudden to me. Yeah, well, I, part of it is they had a, part of it was out of necessity. They couldn't run the football. I mean, their offensive line was just young. That was the one thing they really couldn't do. Uh, they have a quarterback who they finally just said, here you go, and took the reins off. They also had sort of a miserable weather year. So their stats based week to week are really based on a lot of it, what the weather was like. There. Minnesota, Michigan, Maryland, Penn State, there were delays in all, all these games where there was you know, this fierce weather that forced you to play a really one-dimensional game or, or, or do certain things. So it's sort of an odd statistical year to look at them. Um, yeah, they, they love the quarterback. They have Brian Lord. He, he is a, uh, a true dual threat quarterback. What I mean by that is, you know, most dual threat guys, you look at uh, Jalen Hurts at Alabama. Like, Alabama's in a better spot if they have a different quarterback to me. Like, he's not a guy who's a run first. We'll teach him how to read coverage as quarterback. And that's the same with JT Barrett, although Barrett, I think, was better early in his career. Whereas Lorkey is sort of that true. Uh, drop back passer who also has great feet, and I think that's the order you wanted, and, and, and that's given them tremendous advantage. They, I mean, they've, they've won with both his arm and his feet this year as he's progressed, and um, you know he's got two years left. And so yeah, they're, they're, they got to a point where to beat Ohio, or sorry, to beat Penn State, they had to go toe to toe with, with Devin's, and, and the only way to keep moving the ball and score was to let Lord pass, and he outplayed Tristan Sorley that day. Graham, what I love about bowl season is, although people question the motivation factor of certain programs, uh, I can't get into that. I can't conjecture. What I like is that uh, it's it's tied to something we talked about earlier, not enough cross-sectional games. So now we finally get the Power Five teams together, 
for more than just the one game of the three or four non-conference games. And we get to see the best against the best. And we get to see like-seeded teams taking on one another. When the games are scheduled five years in advance, you don't know that you're going to get the best team from the ACC taking on the seventh best team in the Big Ten and so forth. But we get a, a comparable matchup here with Michigan State taking on Washington State. Of course, the Cougars lost to Minnesota in the Holiday Bowl, the same game last year. I'm understanding that Michigan State wanted to go to Florida, uh, that they feel a little bit snubbed in favor of Michigan. Uh, but your thoughts uh, overall about the matchup here with the Cougars? Yeah, it was twofold. One, I think they thought all along they were going to go to the Citrus Bowl. And a, a number of factors prevented that. Basically, the Big Ten had a team in the Orange Bowl that would not have a team in the Citrus Bowl. The only way that happened is if the highest-ranked non-champion from the SEC or Big Ten was a Big Ten team. And for a long time, it looked like with the number of SEC teams up there that the the loser of the SEC championship or Alabama or, you know, simply it was constant wins that game there in the Citrus Bowl. And the Citrus Bowl has significance to Michigan State fans because of a, the 2000 season, which was Saban's last year, and, and sort of between Rose Bowl years, 87 and 2013, was probably the most hopeful moment in program history. So they look at that bowl differently. Then it comes down to, you know, not just travel in Florida in the year's day. The matchup is actually better. Washington State's more interesting matchup. The Holiday Bowl's been around longer than the Outback Bowl. But everything, the way Michigan State fans feel about themselves is related to Michigan. And so in Michigan, with two more conference losses and a head-to-head -head loss in Ann Arbor gets chosen over them, there are naturally uh, hurt feelings and, and, and questions about why you play these games and all that stuff. So they'll get over that, though, I, I think. And, and playing Washington State might lead to, you know, obviously a fascinating quote, an interesting, an interesting, uh, uh, interesting program and, They'll throw it around. I think it's a, it's a fun matchup to watch. I, 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 think, I, I think it's actually a decent bowl game for them once they get past the disappointment beginning with the Citrus Bowl and then Michigan being chosen over them. 